Hi everyone, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me here on Art on the Creek. We're in my home studio in Parker, Colorado. And you know, if you're just getting started in your watercolor journey, I really want you to be as successful as possible. So which paper should you buy? Should you buy wood pulp or should you buy cotton? Let's find out. Are you ready? Here we go. The two brands that I want to compare today are B Watercolor Paper, and uh, this is made by Royal Arts, Royal Brush Company, Royal Langnickel, I should say. And this one is Grumbacher, also a very well-known artist brand. Both of these appeal to the school market. I'm not so sure as much about the B Watercolor Paper, but the Royal and Langnickel brushes really appear, appeal to the educational market. And this one I've seen in schools a lot as well. So first of all, what's the difference? Well, this one comes in a nine by 12 and B comes in different sizes too, but I wanted to compare this way because this is six inches by nine inches, which is exactly half of one of these. So size wise, it's an easy comparison to make. I could just cut one of these in half and we can compare on the same size paper. So price comparison, 30 sheets, acid free, Optimum sizing for watercolor, cold pressed surface. That's true of the B watercolor paper also. 140 pound, 300 GSM for both of them. But here's the difference. This one, the B watercolor paper, is 44 cents a sheet for this little six by nine. This one here, you're getting 30 sheets as opposed to 50. So a little bit, little bit different there. 26 cents a sheet. So this is really affordable. If you mess up, it's not going to bother you. If you mess up with this, it's not that big of a deal, but gosh, you use two of them. And if you use something you don't like, that's almost been a dollar that you, you maybe wanted to throw away. But I want to show you something because if you're using cotton watercolor paper, I think you'll waste less because your watercolors will perform better. Alrighty, what I think I'm going to do is let's just take one sheet of this B watercolor paper and I'm also going to tear out a sheet of this Grumbacher. And again, the Grumbacher, this is the wood pulp. And since we want these to be about the same size, let me go ahead and cut this. All right, and I have, where is one? Here we go. I like to save these boards the back of watercolor paper pads or blocks because this is really good chipboard and uh, you can paint on it very easily. So let's see, we've got the wood pulp paper here and the cotton watercolor paper here. And the way I can tell is that the wood pulp paper has a very defined texture. I don't know if you can see that. I'm hoping it picks up on camera. Uh, this one is not quite as textured. It's textured in a different way, I should say. Um, this one you can kind of see it looks a little like a paper towel and this one's a little bit more like, uh, I don't know, like an orange, pull, an orange peel, orange skin. So cotton will be on our left and the wood pulp will be on our right. Now let me get some tape here and we'll just tape these down. One thing to note is that cotton watercolor paper can vary greatly. There are many different qualities of cotton. There are different grades used. The process in paper making can be very different and the sizing used can be different as well. And all of those can affect performance. But for this test here today, I think the B watercolor paper is a really good choice. Okay. Make sure so you can see what's going on. This one will be the wood pulp. And this one will be cotton. There we go. So let's go in with my number 12 round. So Princeton Neptune. We're just going to get this wet with some water. I'll go about that far. Let's see. I'm tipping it to the light because I want to make sure that uh, I've got it fairly even. So I'm really carefully getting that wash even. 
All right, now I'm going to go into one of these fun colors here on our paper. Let's do magenta. That's my favorite color. Get a little more pigment on that. And I'm just going, this is just a, a basic wet on wet technique that you might use for a background or filling in a sky, anything like that. I'm not going to go all the way down to the end of the water. I've left about a half an inch there. And then just to have an interesting comparison, I'm going to go into some uh, ultramarine blue. And let's go ahead and drop some of that in as well along half of it blends beautifully makes a lovely purple okay we've got that set up now let's go into the green this time and let's see what it is like when we do wet on dry we'll get caught up on the cotton side here we'll do the same thing let me get this side wet and again, I just want to make sure that I've got this evenly uh, distributed, this water. Don't have any puddles. Okay, that looks really good. Now we'll go into that magenta again. And we'll just move this bead right across. And I don't know if you can notice, but right away, the paint is flowing a little bit more. It really wants to move on this paper. So we'll do the same thing. We'll go into the ultramarine and go along the side here. We get the same beautiful blend of purple. And I love mixing paints on the paper, so that's always a joy for me. Now let me go into that green and we'll do that comparison here. And this is again wet on dry. Sorry, let me... There we go. All right, and we'll let that dry. And now what I want to do is to go into, let's do yet another color. We'll do the emerald green. And we're going to make a circle. I'll do this one over here. Again, wet on dry. And now I'm going to go in and I'm just going to drop some color in. Let's go into the lemon yellow here. And we'll drop some color in along the side. Now the same thing. We'll go into that emerald green again and I'll do it right here. Can you see what I'm doing? Yes. I'll go right here. And now we're going to go into that lemon yellow and we'll drop the color in. All right, now we are going to just let this sit. And when we come back, I think we'll be able to have a good comparison as to which paper is going to be a better performer for us. All right, let's let this dry and we'll see you in a couple minutes. We're back. This has had plenty of time to dry and I'm going to go ahead and take the, there's still some wet paint on the edges here. I'm going to take the tape off. This is our cotton. This is our wood pulp. So let's take off our tape. Alrighty, so that we don't get confused. This is wood pulp here. And this is cotton. So first let's compare our wash of the magenta and the blue. Some of these comparisons might be just a little bit subtle, but I'm hoping you can pick them up on your monitor. Uh, here's what I want to point out. Do you see how you have this ombre of color over here on the cotton? The color is most intense up here and then it gradually gets lighter as we worked it down. Here, everything is about the same value. Here we have this beautiful gradient of color, and here it's just kind of all the same. We don't have a good mix in the sense that 
there's no movement in the paint on the right. On the left, we have this beautiful gradient of color. We have a lot more emotion in the painting. We have a lot more dynamic energy. But on the right, you can see it's just kind of forced and flat. It's just not as good to look at. When we look at our green pass, you can see right away the difference. On the right, there's this hard line right there, and you can see every swoop of the brush. Here we go. I'm, I'm coming in with my brush, and I go down, up, down, up, down, up, down. You can see every swoop. And here you can see that you still can see those swoops of the brush, but they're not as pronounced. They're a little more evenly distributed over here on the cotton than they are here. And that goes with our circle comparison as well. Let's just take a look and see what happened here with these circles. On the left, you can see we've got a nice soft wash of color up here. It's really very nice, nice and smooth. The color is has an even value throughout. And then over here on the right, we have all of these uh, backgrounds and cauliflower blooms. And that just makes it very difficult. All we were doing is filling in that circular area. And if you're working with your paints and trying to get something very smooth, it's just such a challenge on wood pulp paper. When we dropped the pigment in, of course, it did add some water to the the, the picture, but I think we're going to be all right here with our comparison. You can really see all this leaching we have on the right and on the left. You can see up near the top, it really started to blend quite smoothly. Um, but on the right, that leaching is really excessive and that is just not going to give you a, a good blend. It just distorts your values quite a bit and that makes it very frustrating. But for me, the biggest difference is here in these washes. So for instance, if you were doing a sunset, let's pretend that you're painting a sunset. Which sunset would you rather look at? I'd rather look at this one. It's just softer. It's, it's easier. It melts together more. And I don't know if you can tell here, but here's where the water line is on both of these. I'll put a little pencil line there so that you can see it a little better. This paint continued to travel down to that water line and here it just kind of stopped. The cotton is going to give you a better performance all around. It's going to help the, the watercolor to do what it wants to do. It's going to make your blends and washes come out a lot more smoothly. You're going to be a lot less frustrated. Here's the big problem with wood pulp paper right here are these backgrounds and blooms that you get. So if you're just trying to do a flat wash, this time I'll just go into just a little bit of the ultramarine here and you can see when I go back and forth you can really see that ridge of color where the pigment stays near the tip of the brush and it just does not want to move around. You can manipulate it a little bit but it really takes a lot of passes to get it to be where you want it to be. And by passing over and over and over again on your work you can really risk overworking your painting. Whereas if you're working on cotton paper the paint is going to perform a lot better and it's just going to be smooth on your first pass. And consecutive passes are also easier. So you can see getting that color to get to an even level is just a lot easier on cotton paper than it is on wood pulp. And for that reason, that's why I recommend that you get some cotton paper. I will list some brands in the, uh, in the description below that I think are really pretty affordable brands. There are different grades of cotton, so you might have to play with these and figure out which one you like. But um, I think that in order to achieve the best results that you can with watercolor, you're going to want cotton paper. I hope that was helpful to you guys. Thanks for tuning in today, and I hope everyone has a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.